we have quite extensively analyzed the response of a first order circuit to constant inputs. So, now for any arbitrary first order circuit and some piecewise constant input you can find the response. It is quite hard to find the response for some arbitrary time dependent signal. So, we have started with something that is constant, now we will go to something that is a little more complicated. So, let us say we have again I will first take this circuit the same thing that we have been using. And in this case I will use an exponential as the input ok. There are a few reasons for using this you will find that any input can be decomposed into a sum of exponentials or an integral of exponentials with different values of this s ok. So, we would not get into that you can assume that for now you will see the details in a course like networks and systems and you can uh, for now imagine that maybe you had a first order system it gave some exponential output and you fed that into another first order system that is why we study this ok. What happens if we do that ok. So, that is the motivation to do something like this. In this case if we write out the differential equation we will get ok. So, we have to find the value of uh, V c which will satisfy this and we assume that we solve this for t greater than 0 and then so on ok. So, how would we go about solving for this? So, there is something known as an integrating factor which is basically essentially solutions that you have mugged up based on previous experience. So, you know that if the input is of this function the solution will be of that ok. Let us do the simple minded thing like we always do in this course which is that this I know how to solve ok. I will try to reduce this also to that that is how I solved the constant also right. With the constant input I change the variable. So, let us try to do that first the simple thing to try to do is ok. So, please rewrite this in terms of V c 1 and compare it to what I derive we get R c d V c 1 by d t plus V c 1 equals minus S C R V P exponential S T ok. The simplest print did not work we did not get a homogeneous uh, equation. So, what do we do? We can try a linear combination of these two equations. So, this uh, multiply by S C R and this we multiply by 1 ok. What we get is R C right because it is a linear operator right I put this inside the derivative and then here also I get also the right hand side. 0 ok. So, now this new variable you could call this V c 2 if you want. What is the solution to V c 2? R c d V c 2 by d t plus V c 2 is 0. V c 2 is some uh, constant times exponential minus t by R c. So, now from this find the solution for V c which is what I want ok just back substitute all the variables and find it only in terms of V c. Please do that. This clear just some silly algebraic tricks to get the right hand side to be 0 that is all ok. What is the solution? V c 2 0 exponential minus t by R c equals S c R times V c plus V c 1. This V c 1 itself is nothing but ok. 
so what do we have we see of t equals vp exponential st plus vc20 exponential minus t by rc divided by scr plus 1 okay now you can express this slightly differently also so this vc20 i mean vc2 itself doesn't have any particular significance except that it was an intermediate variable that we got while solving this right so this is some constant so you can also simply write this as vp exponential st by scr plus 1 plus some constant times exponential minus t by rc as usual whether you put it like this or like that this constant has to be found from initial conditions okay so let's say you know that the capacitor voltage is some value at t equal to 0 you substitute t equal to 0 in this whole thing and then find that thing okay so i will simply say some uh, v not or something like this so this has to be found from initial conditions okay you can put it this way or this way this is just a redefinition of the constant what i want to point out here is what is this part of the response steady state response or forced response or the particular solution okay and this is the natural response the natural response of the circuit remains the same always right only thing is its coefficient will change by the way this coefficient will also depend on what forcing input you apply this is known as the forcing function because if you substitute vc of zero equal to some value that will also depend on s to adjust this uh, value of uh, v not some s will come in somewhere okay for instance if uh, vc of zero was zero i would get vp exponential zero uh, which is just vp okay and this value of vc20 would be minus vp to make it equal to zero so this constant would be vp divided by 1 plus scr okay so this constant itself will depend on the input that you apply it's not the same for any input and for zero input it will be different also for zero input that will simply be the initial voltage on the capacitor so it will depend on the initial voltage on the capacitor and also on the forcing function okay so the natural response does depend on the input okay the steady state response depends only on the input that's the definition of the steady state response okay now for any stable circuit like the one we have this natural response will die out with time and you will be left with only the steady state response okay is this fine so this solution is clearly not valid when 1 plus scr is zero right okay so you tell me what might happen but you do get an interesting solution what you can do is you take the limit as 1 plus scr tends to zero convenient way of doing it is let's say you define yet another variable some delta equals 1 plus scr okay and then everywhere you have s you substitute it by the appropriate mapping with delta okay and then you take this limit very simple stuff you have to use limits and lopital rule and you will get the answer okay so clearly this as it stands is not valid when s equals minus 1 by cr right what does it mean what is that condition scr plus 1 equal to 0 so what it means is if you excite an rc circuit with an exponential which is the same as the natural response of the rc circuit you will get something weird okay so that's the bottom line isn't it scr plus 1 equal 0 that means that this forcing function is vp exponential minus t by rc exponential minus t by rc is also the natural response of this system so when you excite an rc circuit in general any circuit with an exponential which is also the same as the natural response you will get a slightly different solution okay you can find the solution so you have the steady state or forced response and the natural response that you always have what is a very very important thing is that if the input is an exponential exponential st the forced response is also an exponential okay isn't it what is the forced response this is some this whole thing is some constant okay we applied vp times exponential st what we are getting is some other constant vp by scr plus 1 maybe it is slightly smaller than vp 
But the point is if you have exponential st as the forcing function, the steady state response is also exponential st, okay. So it is a very, very important feature of any linear system. So these complex exponentials are eigenvectors of these linear systems. Eigenvectors I explained briefly. What it means is that if you transform a vector in some way, let us say using a matrix, you will get another vector. Now eigenvectors of a matrix are those vectors for which the transformation is only in the magnitude, not in the direction. Similarly here, if you have exponential st, only its magnitude is manipulated. I mean it has not become some other function, okay. A course like networks and systems will be based on or at least a big part of it will be based on this exponential st being an eigenvector of this, okay. So that is why it is very, very useful. So combining this idea that the force response to exponential st is a exponential st and you can decompose any input in terms of exponential st, okay. You know that a square wave is a sum of uh, sine wave and its harmonics, right, at the same frequency, a 1 kilohertz square wave will have a sine wave at 1 kilohertz and 2 and 3 and so on, okay. So similarly, this can be further generalized into any signal being represented as some linear combination of exponentials, okay. After all, sinusoid is also some exponential, right, with uh, S being imaginary, okay. So with those two, you can uh, come up with this generalized analysis of uh, systems, right. For any input, you will be able to find the output using what is known as the Laplace transform. We won't get into it here. You will see that in another course, okay. So now we have solved the first order circuit for a constant input and for an exponential input. Now of course, these two are not really separate cases. If I put s equal to 0, I get the other one, right. That is pretty obvious. If I put s equal to 0, this bottom becomes 1 and I have Vp and V0 exponential minus T by RC, okay. So a constant is also an exponential with this S is like a frequency, the frequency being 0, okay. Is this fine? So just like uh, if you have cos omega t, omega is the frequency of the sinusoid. So this exponential st, s is like a frequency, right. A large value of s means that the exponential changes very rapidly, whether it is positive or negative. If it is negative, it will decay very rapidly. If it is positive and large, it will blow up very rapidly. Now, if the value of s is very small, again, whether it is positive or negative, it will either decay very slowly or creep up very slowly, okay. And if s is 0, it will not change at all, okay. And that is the same with sinusoids also. Cos omega t, omega is 0, it does not change. Is this fine? So, the important thing to take home from here is that Now we have done this for a first order linear system, but this is true of any linear system, okay. So if we have second order or third order circuits, this will still be true. The particular thing we have found out is for the first order circuit.